my slides. Okay, perfect. So let's go. Now, welcome everybody to this very special event for us, the Good Peach Summit. Now, the reason why at Ideas on Stage we host this event every single year, this is the third edition we started in 2020, is because we have two big beliefs. One belief is around the idea of business as a force for good. We are big fans and advocates of purpose-driven business and entrepreneurship. So that's one idea, one big belief that we have. And the other one is that in the end, you can have the greatest idea in the world. And by the way, this is even more relevant if we are talking about ideas that have the power to make the world a better place. But you see, you can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you can't communicate it effectively, if you can't present it effectively, it doesn't matter. And so this event sits at the intersection of these two key ideas. And before we get started, let me see. I see many of you, but not all of you. So for all the others, now, of course, you don't have to, I don't want to push it. But if you feel like it, especially if you're dressed in this part of your body, why not? If you want to turn your webcam on, that's the best thing we can do to, to make it interactive and enjoyable, not just for me, but also for all of you. So again, I don't want to push you, but if you feel like it, it would be great if you could show us how beautiful you are on camera. And many of you know me, but some of you don't. So just a super quick intro from my side. My name is Andrea. I'm the head of Ideas on Stage UK. We've got our founder as well, Phil Wakenell. Phil, feel free again to say hi in the chat. And at Ideas on Stage, we specialize in working with business owners, leaders, and the teams who want to become more confident presenters. In the last 12 years, we've worked with thousands of clients around the world, including companies like Microsoft, Lacoste, the World Bank, we've got Angelica in the audience as well, and more than 500 TEDx speakers. Our mission is to stop great ideas from failing just because of the way they are presented. And a vision is to help hundreds of thousands of business leaders share their message so they can grow their business, increase their influence, and make a positive impact in the world. And I also want to thank, big thank you to all of our partners. We've got Impact Hub, King's Cross, Social Enterprise Mark CIC, Alia, Goodwill Studios, I saw Will, I think, earlier, Hatch Enterprise, and the new PL brand. Purpose Institute with Paul Spires. All of these organizations are very much connected to the idea of purpose-driven entrepreneurship. And by the way, if we've got like Paul and Will and anybody else, if we have representatives from these organizations here in the audience, please feel free to say hi in the chat. Feel free to drop a link to your LinkedIn profile or your website. The one of the useful things about these events is to also create and enrich meaningful connections as well. All right, now here is what we do today. We've got seven speakers. Each speaker is going to give a very quick one minute presentation. So it's going to be challenging for them, but that's part of the process. What a one minute presentation on their idea. And then I will ask everybody in the audience to select their, if you want, their favorite speaker. And by the way, as you watch the presentations, let's use the chat. Let's make it interactive. If you have, if you hear any ideas that resonate with you, or if you have any, anything that you'd like to share, it could be also your feedback based on the idea itself, how well they communicate it feel free to share your, your feedback, your reflections, anything you notice in the chat. And so then we'll select three finalists and then we'll give each finalist an opportunity to present their idea, their idea again, but this time for up to three minutes. So again, not a long time, but a little bit better than one minute. And then we'll select a winner. We've got four judges as well. They will offer their feedback as well. 
And, and then we'll wrap it up. We've got some prizes and bonuses for the winner, but for everybody as well. And, and that's it. So in terms of the speakers, we've got Sebastian Bates, who is the founder of the Bates Foundation. Sebastian is going to talk about inspiring a generation to make a global impact. We also have Karen Skidmore, ambassador for the Hunger Project UK, who is going to talk about charity giving. Mark Convey, co-founder of Thrive Now, who is going to talk about humanizing businesses with inside out thinking. We'll see what that means. We also have Mehala Beckett, founder of Lead Powerful Impact, who is going to talk about four words that will change the world. I'm very curious to hear what these four words are. Four words that will change the world. We also have Mo Kanjila, co-creator of Watch This Space. Mo is going to talk about how to create innovation through inclusion. We have Josh Mastromato from the US, founder of Rego. Josh is going to talk about the importance of used furniture in the circular economy and then unfortunately we, we were supposed to have Chrissy Levitt as well from Creative Conscience she sent me an email this morning that she's not feeling well let me see in the chat because she said that maybe she's she was going to attend but I don't think that she's going to make it and in the meantime in the chat I see Jesse Jesse co-founder of an amazing brand No Planet B so check it out hi Jesse and, and then we're going to finish with Alice Moxley. Alice is the founder of Pivot, and she's going to talk about designing for the maker. And again, we'll see what that means. And then we have our four judges, Mark LaRouste, founder and CEO of Ministry of Purpose. Now, with Mark, I try to have him involved in this event in one way or another for years so i'm very happy to to have you marky again thank you very much for your collaboration together with all the others highly experienced judges nicole yershon founder of the ny collective billy khan founder of maverick and daryl irwin co-founder of humans and and that's it i would say i think we're good to go Let's get started. And we'll start with Sebastian, inspiring a generation to make a global impact. Sebastian, remember that now you take your time. Whenever you are ready, you've got one minute. And as I told you, I will feel very bad if I have to do it, but I will have to do it. Whether you finish or not, after one minute, I'll need to stop you. So do, do you have any questions, Seb, before we get started? No questions, no. The, all the speakers and all the judges sound amazing. Just happy to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. Thank you. Thank you. And from now on, whenever you want. Okay, so my name is Sebastian Bates. I'm a two times best-selling author and former trainer to the royal family. I'm the founder of the Warrior Academy and the Bates Foundation. The Warrior Academy is a martial arts organization that's responsible for developing the character of 25,000 children around three continents. The most important yet often missing aspect of a child's development is their character. It guides absolutely every decision they make in their life. We don't need better educated leaders leading businesses, communities, or even countries. We need leaders with a strong moral compass, a strong set of values, and a black belt character. Developing a black belt character has had a profound impact on my life. And I'm on a mission to bring the warrior method into every continent over the next two years transforming hundreds of thousands of young lives. And today I'd like to share with you exactly how we plan to do that. Amazing, congratulations, Seb. So you've got even seven seconds to go. So that, that's, that's great. Seven seconds to go, that's, that's amazing. And before, so we'll do a quick round with everybody. Before we go with a second speaker, Karen. So Karen, please make sure that you are ready to go. Like anybody in the chat are judges, but anybody else, if you've noticed anything, anything, it could be one thing that really resonated with you from a content perspective, from a communication perspective, the setup, anything at all that you've noticed that you'd like to highlight, please feel free to share it in the chat. For now, Seb, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we'll, we'll catch up soon later during the event. Now, Karen Skidmore, 
is going to talk about charity giving. Karen, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. And in the meantime, I see, yeah, Will, nice, clean and tight presentation, black belt character. Love it, Angelica. Yeah. Yeah, again, the catchy line, black belt character resonated with, more, with, with lots of people, Seb. Okay, right. Karen, whenever you want. Hi, my name is Karen Skidmore, and I'm an ambassador for The Hunger Project. We're a charity that's ending world hunger through education and empowerment of women. Founded in 1977, The Hunger Project believes in a hands-up approach rather than a hands-out. They have reached more than 15 million people across their grassroots projects across Africa, South Asia, and Latin America. And I've run my own coaching business and training company for the last 16 years, and I was searching for ways of how to make a bigger difference that limited by the time that I had. I joined the Hunger Project UK team last year to help relaunch Unleashed Women movement. It's a network of female founders and investors, and I'm currently looking to speak to women who want to be one of our first 50 founding members. What excites me the most about working with the Hunger Project is how scalable their impact is. Ending world hunger starts with people, and when women are supported and empowered, all of society benefits, and I'd love for you to discover how you can be part of this too. Wow, it's going very well today. You also have four seconds to go. Really well done, Karen. Congratulations. And again, for everybody in the audience, if, you, if anything has resonated with you, and by the way, let's also use this event as an opportunity to again, create meaningful connections. If in the audience you hear something and maybe you know somebody who could be useful for, and, and maybe you could make an introduction for our speakers or for our judges, then do that. That, that would be very useful. Okay, let's, uh, let, lots of comments there, scalable impact. Okay, perfect. Now let's move on to the third speaker, Mark, Mark Combe humanizing businesses with inside out thinking and in the meantime let's see let's see here feel two great pitches to start with the level is high yeah sound intent vitally important from jesse to the future of our planet empowering women yeah great cause amazing all right mark are we ready to go yeah we're ready to go hello everybody I, I need to be ready to go as well because i'm counting the seconds so i'm also ready now so from now on whenever you want Brexit, global pandemic, climate emergency, war raging, cost of living crisis. Has there ever been a more tra traumatic time in our lives than the past few years? Has circumstance and technology not blurred the lines between work and home life? Are you then surprised that terms like the great resignation and quiet quitting are sprouting up to explain what's going on in our workforce at present? So many of us are exhausted and burning out, but it doesn't have to be this way. I see a better life for all of us that doesn't start with what we have or what's going on around us, but then rather who we are and who we choose to become. If we want to see real change, it begins with an, each of us, an inside out way of thinking. I'm Mark Convey. I'm the co-founder of Thrive Now, and we want to show you how we can help. And then we want, we want you to join us on our quest. Thank you very much. Also, Mark, again, congratulations, exactly like Seb. You had seven seconds before, before the one minute mark. Congratulations again. And before we go to the next speaker, again, always in the chat, let us know what was one thing you really liked about Mark's presentation. Remember, it could be anything. There is no right or wrong comment. There's no stupid idea. Let us know what you think. Fabulous standout background. Yeah, you see, like for example, Nicole, it doesn't have to, it could be related to the content. It could be related to the setup. It, it could be anything really. Emotionally engaging page. That's from Judy, clear and engaging Angelica, quiet quitting. Yeah, socially so relevant. Okay, perfect. And if you are this as well, clear and concise, Queen. Fantastic. All right. So now we have Mehala Beckett, Four words that will change the world. Mehala, are we ready? I'm ready. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I believe in you. Four words that can change the world. Four words that can change your world and the world around you by using your business as a force for good. 
At Lead Powerful Impact, we accelerate businesses driving economic, social, and environmental impact. Partnering with leaders like you, who believe so passionately in what they do, they can never do enough, who are such pleasers, they want to bring everyone with them, and who want to change the world through a new way of doing business. I work as their coach, mentor, and B Corp consultant, and as a result of spending time with me, leaders are re-energized by their mission, focused on their strategy, and at peace with their progress. So they fall back in love with what they do, they take their business impact to the next level, and they sleep at night. Who do you know who craves this? And do you want to hear more about B Corp? That was exactly one minute. Exactly one minute. If if it was one more second, we would have heard like a kind of ah, ah, ah. But you didn't do that, Mihala. So that was great. Again, congratulations. And let us know in the chat, what was the one thing you really liked about Mihala's presentation, either from a content perspective or from a, let's say, public speaking or delivery perspective? Okay, let's see. Love the hook. Yeah. And by the way, Lauren, the hook is so important. At the beginning, the objective of your hook, the introduction is to make them want to listen. You, you want to find a way to capture, to grab the audience's attention. The hook is very, very important. And Mark is also talking about the ending as well, which by the way, we are talking about the two most important parts of any presentation, the beginning and the, end, the ending. Thank you for making it interactive and sharing all your comments. Also, Daryl mentioned the same thing, the start and the hook. Yeah, the hook. Perfect. <laughs> Mark, a bit like life. Yeah. Okay, so now we have Mo. Mo Kanjilal, how to create innovation through inclusion. Again, Mo, are we good to go? Yeah, good to go. Whenever you want. Okay. Hi, I'm Mo, one of the co-creators of Watch This Space. Did you know that diverse, inclusive teams output 19% more innovation, make decisions 87% better with half the number of meetings, and employees are 50% likely to leave? Recruiting and retaining employees is a top concern for employers and can really hold back innovation. And 47% of millennials look for diversity and inclusion in who they want to work for and it's even more for the next generation. This is not new data, and many leaders know they want to do something about this, but they don't know where to start or how to drive changes that stick to create that innovation. At Watch This Space, we're on a mission to help people reimagine the world of work to include everyone. Our unique inclusion audit engages with people across an organization, creating a roadmap for change that sticks, and we give people a visual way of seeing that process. Watch This Space. Amazing. Three seconds. Three seconds to go. Well done, Mo. Watch this space. Everybody in the chat, let us know. By the way, it can, it can also be constructive criticism. I wouldn't say criticism, but, but let's say constructive feedback. It could be either one thing you really enjoyed from any of the presentations you've seen. If you have experience from a communication perspective as well, if you have any feedback for improvement, as long as the intent is constructive, then why not? Just give it a try. Let us know in the chat what you think. Yeah, a little bit of supporting data, which was nice from Judy, perfect. Okay, and then Michelle, more connection with the audience, with the world, with the world inclusive. Jesse, I like that you recognize that it's hard to recruit. This is my experience too. The CVs can be a lot of the same, yeah. It's hard to stand out. Okay, right. And we've got Josh now. Josh Mastromato, the importance of used furniture in the circular economy. Are you with us, Josh? Yeah, can you can you hear me okay? Nervous I about can. this one minute, you know? Say, say it again? <laughs> I said I'm nervous, nervous about, about the one, one minute. minute. <laughs> yeah, everybody's crushing it. Yeah, yeah, everybody is, yeah. You will, you will too, as long as you've prepared. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> let me know when I'm good to go. You are. All right. So I do have a question for all of you, but if you feel as though it's too personal, then it's okay not to answer. 
but raise your hand in your home right now if you own furniture. If you did, then this is great because it'll apply to you. Because furniture is such a common part of our lives, yet there's no good sustainable waste management solution for furniture once we're done with it, which is crazy to think about. And that leads to over 12 million tons of furniture landfilled each year here in the United States alone. That's equivalent to 129 kilometers worth of couches, which is enough couches to get you from Manchester to Nottingham or the center of London to the English Channel. And that's what my company, Rego, exists to solve. We provide a hassle-free solution for people to sell, donate, and responsibly dispose of their used furniture. And in just our short time being open, we've already diverted over 70,000 pounds of furniture away from landfills in two different sustainable outlets, helping to reduce the carbon footprint of that furniture by an average of 82% per unit. Amazing. Seven seconds for you, too. So you made it. You made it, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go long. Now... Again, I'm curious to hear what people think. Let us know in the chat. I can also share a couple of a couple of things I've I've noticed. One was well done for trying to include a moment of interaction from the very beginning with with a question, and also well done for attempting to use a reference which was local. Now, we have an international audience today, but you know that because I got in touch from Ideas on Stage UK, I'm sure that's why you use from Manchester to London or something which is relevant to a UK audience. Uh, and it's very important to, to try and do our best to communicate something which is as relevant as possible for the audience. And let's see a few other comments. Will, yeah, also great opening with the interaction, yeah. Representation with facts and stats. So Queen enjoyed the the facts, and on that you see on that point, it's also good to find a way from a communication perspective to. We want to make sure that our presentations, our communication in general, has a good mix of logic and emotion. And in one minute, it's not always easy, but logic means facts and figures, and then emotion is stories, analogies, anecdotes, and any presentation should have the right mix of logic and emotion, and the right mix is based on the audience, of course. Yeah, also Gloria appreciated the attempt to be relevant. Okay, great. We have one more speaker, Alice Moxley, designing for the maker. Again, Alice, are you, are you ready? Hi, yeah, I think so. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm going to be the only one that's over. But, um... <laughs> no, no, of course you are, whenever you want us. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. We are Pivot, and we have pioneered a way of bringing work into hostels. Sorry, I can hear loads of background noise. I don't know if that's... And like Alice, can, Alice, can you help? So we'll start again, Alice. Alice, can you help us? Yeah, because yeah. You, you know what happens, Alice? We can't, we can't mute everybody at the same time because then if we do that, we'll mute, we'll mute you as well. So every time ah. there is some background noise, we need to go there individually and mute people. So we'll do our best for you, okay? All right, sorry. No, it was just, it was really distracting me. No, okay, no, that's I'll start again. Um, we are Pivot and have pioneer, pioneered a way of bringing work into hostels, giving people meaning, purpose, and a route out of homelessness. Mm -hmm. By creating a system of prefabricated manufacture for jewelry, we've designed jewelry specifically for the person making it, bringing work into hostels that really suits the needs, spatial requirements, and flexibility of someone living in a very particular and difficult situation. Think of your dream bed and the showroom you visit. You ask for a very particular style, perhaps a super king because your partner snores or a firm mattress to ease lower back pain. You go to the store, but there's nothing in stock. Without a bed, you have nothing to sleep in. Instead, you're offered a canoe. Sure, you can sleep in it, but is it comfortable? Do you really need a bed which floats? Maybe a silly analogy, but what I'm trying to demonstrate is that so often in temporary accommodation, work is not only hard to access, what is available is often entirely inappropriate. Pivot is not just jewellery, it's a way of work. It reframes what work can be to people living in temporary accommodation, bringing truly flexible, creative and meaningful employment directly into hostels. Perfect timing as well for you, Alice. Thank you very much. Again, let us know in the chat. I see already, Mehala, great analogy. Analogies are very powerful in communication. One of the best ways to explain something new is to connect it to something the audience already knows and understand. When you make that connection, 
that's when learning happens. Okay, let's see a lovely message. Great page from Meredith. Yeah, fantastic imagery to help us remember your business long after you're gone. Thought provoking. Okay, amazing. All right. So congratulations to everybody, to our seven speakers. This was the first part of the event. What we'll do now, before we hear some initial ideas and reflections from our judges, I let's do this. I'm going to launch a poll for everybody to select their favorite speaker or favorite presentation. And this will allow us to select the three finalists. And then remember, the three finalists will have an opportunity to present their project, their business, their idea again in three minutes. So we'll give them more time. And again, we'll have a feedback round from the judges for each of the three finalists as well. So what I'll do, I'm going to launch the poll. You should see it now. I'll give you some time. You've got the speaker and the title of the presentation, or at least a summary of the topic. So do take some time to go through it, have a look at your notes, and then please select, select your favorites. And then I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, I see. So for now, 65% of people, 68%, 70% now participated. So I'll give you a few more seconds. Okay, we've got 82%. A few more seconds in case anybody else would like to participate in the selection of the three finalists. Difficult choice, Will. Yeah. <laughs> it's also difficult for me to because there are some very close votes here. So it's difficult for me to, to select it. That's why I'm buying some time. No, I'm just kidding. I've got two finalists for sure already. And yeah, I think we have it. We have it. Okay. I'm ready to. Let's see if there is, can you send it again? Yeah, I could choose only one. Yes, yeah, Angelica, I saw your direct message. There was just one, one speaker, you just select one, but then this allows me to select the three finalists based on the, on the, on, on, on the most votes. Okay, so we have the three finalists. One finalist is Mehala Beckett, four words that will change the world. Congratulations, Mehala. Another finalist is Josh Mastromato, the importance of used furniture in the circular economy. And the third finalist is Sebastian Bates, inspiring a generation to make a global impact. And by the way, I didn't say that in order of who received the, the, the higher, the higher uh, assessment, it's just the three finalists. And what the most important thing is what Mark said in the chart. Mark Reroost, no matter who, who is selected as a finalist, everybody, everybody has done an amazing, an amazing job. I, I have to say, we've run this event a few times already, and it never happened in the past that all of the speakers were able to pitch their idea without going long. And, and I know this is not the only criteria, but it's an important one. So congratulations, everybody. Now, before we continue, so before we then do Mehala, Josh, and Sebastian again, for our speakers, so we've got roughly five minutes in total, so perhaps more or less one minute each. What are your thoughts? Like Mark, Nicole, Billy, Darrell, again, you could think about one particular presentation that you've seen, and you could focus on one thing that you really liked, or maybe if you've got any feedback for improvement, let us know as well. Who would like to go first? Mark, Nicole, Billy, or Daryl? I'm good. Go, go, Nicole. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, amazing elevator pitches for everyone. Not easy um, getting your uh, message across in one minute. So um, I say thank you to all of you for doing that. That's amazing. Um, 
for me, uh, the, the finalists that uh, were chosen, uh, the reason for me that was um, interesting was because they had a very clear target. Who were they talking to? Uh, they had a very clear why. They were speaking to the camera as though they were talking directly at me and it wasn't read um, or didn't appear to be read. I mean, I, I kind of felt a little bit with Mahala that that was read, but she was so confident that it just, um, you didn't really realize it and her eyes weren't darting. So therefore as a someone who's listening, it, 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 um, it made me feel safe. There's something around when you're reading and your eyes dart, it makes the, the person who's uh, the viewer, if you like, not feel so safe. Um, the catchy lines are really good because it means that you remember it immediately. Um, so yes, that's my kind of minutes worth of feedback. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you very much, Nicole. And, and absolutely, on just one point you made, eye contact is very powerful in communication. It's one of the ways we have to make a strong connection with the audience. Okay, who would like to go next? Mark, Billy, Darrell, anything to share from your side? I can go next if you like. Can Thank you hear you, me Billy. okay? Yep. I think the, um, the good thing with all the presentations was obviously, you know, everybody's trying to do some good. We understand that. But in this day and age with technology, Zoom makes it so much more difficult. There's you usually when you go somewhere, you can feel somebody's energy on the stage. And to try and convey that when you're doing this via screen is a whole different ball game. And we're all learning that. So one of the things I would say is the people that were able to the the free um, people who probably rated higher was or voted higher was because they were able to convey that. That is that making that connect with somebody via this type of medium is the challenge but they were also very clear about their one of the things I noticed it, it was about their mission and them together and we buy things somehow you know sometimes we like people if somebody else is if somebody was doing something you get invited you don't but if you have a connection with that person you'd go along to that event so because of that it's trying when you're trying to do this pitch it's getting your personality across but also why what you're doing you know there's this um, greek word called meraki and it means when you put a bit of your own soul into whatever you're creating and i think the people that probably um, were voted higher were, were more effective at perhaps doing that yeah thank you billy you the your personal story again very powerful in communication you're right and the other thing you mentioned you are also so right today whether we like you or not when it comes to online communication we have an extra barrier between us and the audience which is technology and so there are ways to still make it engaging and be able to connect with the audience but there are a few things that we need to do that in an in-person situation we don't have to necessarily consider Thank you, Billy. And now anything from Daryl and Mark? Yes, Daryl. Yeah, um, congratulations everybody for pitching. Um, I hate pitching, if I'm honest. <laughs> it makes me really nervous and uh, it just seems really unnatural. And I think the guys that actually went through were the most natural, were the most authentic. I mean, that's the big thing that come out for me. Um, if there was a wild card, if we could chuck a wild card in, I'm not sure, but I would have also had um, a Karen in as well, because I thought she was very authentic as well. Um, and for me, it's knowing your pitch, knowing that you're speaking from the heart where you don't have to read so much because you can be animated. So, you know, I know there was a couple that were read, but they were more animated because they knew what they were talking about. It was an extension of themselves, which made it feel more authentic. So that's the key for every single person here that try and know it by heart or at least lead by heart, even if it's not word for word, get or out of the word for word and just go with the heart first and foremost, because it's the heart, not the head that wins. And, and certainly in this in this world, that's 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 where you're going to get become outstanding. So thank you. Thank you, Daryl. And just quickly from my side to expand on what you've said, you touched on a couple of couple of points. First of all, you said you hate it. It makes you feel nervous everybody does. I'm a presentation coach. We have Phil from our team as well. He's a an amazing public, Phil Wakeman, an amazing public speaking coach. I feel nervous all the time. I, I, I was nervous before this event. Phil feels nervous as well. We all, we all do. Also, you said 
it's not natural. And, and I agree with you, presenting, pitching, communicating in front of a room full of people, whether that's in person or online, is not a natural thing to do. Uh, and it is, it is what it is. And then you said either learning by heart or uh, what, what was your line that either learning by heart, learning by heart or leading, leading, leading from heart. Leading from heart. Now I would say that for some people, it works really well to, especially for this kind of very short presentations to memorize them. But at least, and, and that might be a very good idea for very short pitches. For longer pitches, even if you don't want to memorize it because you don't have to, then in the, you need to follow the approach that works best for you. But definitely, you always need to internalize it. You need to own your content. You need to know exactly what to say and when. Even if, as you said, Daryl, every time you say, every time you rehearse, perhaps you use different words. But we, you need to get to a point where you've owned and internalized your content. I agree with you. Okay, before we do the, we have the three finalists. Any I, any I just, other thoughts from Mark? Yeah. Um, first of all, congratulations to everyone who took part. And I mean that because it can feel really disheartening when we feel like we weren't selected as the the final uh, the final three. One kind of big general feedback I'd say is um, pitching is pitching can be exciting. Actually, I know it can be scary, but it can be exciting if you're excited by your idea and what you're trying to put out in the world pitching can be an opportunity for you to to share so i, I really would invite to, to connect to that energy of like oh i get an opportunity to enroll people in what i'm doing that's really cool the the other thing is there's no shortcut it's like practice 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 and get feedback the more you practice the more feedback you'll get the more you'll see where the areas that you bore people confuse people or lose people which is usually the three things that create a disconnection Yes, that can be mean if you're reading. It could also mean if you have an intro that's a bit too long um, or that you missed out a, a clear kind of call to action. Um, if any of those of you who spoke uh, want to get in touch with me on LinkedIn, I've got a few notes for all of you, I think. So happy to share that at some point over the, over the coming weeks because I know we haven't got a lot of time here. Um, and Andrea, just, is this where we share specific feedback on those who went through or do we do that afterwards? We'll do that later. Okay, cool. Um, so we, we'll so, have we'll have Mark. We'll have five minutes <clears throat> for each of the three finalists later. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So in that case, I'll just say a, a, a couple of random things. One of them is that I often notice myself. Where do I get confused? Uh, like if I like I can get one part of it, but I don't really understand how you do it or why you do it or who you do it for. That's something to explore. Also, I would say like a general approach. Intros just make them short and and snappy. Like get me in straight away. If you go and watch a bunch of TED Talks, you'll see that the intros are usually you're thrown in. There's like a movement. There's something that takes you in. So make that sure. And then for the outros, make sure you have a clear call to action. I think um, one of the strongest calls to actions I, I think I heard today was um, Mihal, I think, around like, do you know someone who fits this? Well, I forgot what the end is, but I was surprised by that's a really strong element in a pitch. It's like, what are you actually trying to get? Are you trying to get funding are you trying to get partnerships are you trying to get um clients um so that's just like an, an overall view but apart from that congrats everyone for taking part it's it's grueling what you're doing is so much harder than what we're doing which is on the sideline and critiquing so well done you're so right thank you very much mark great insights and by the way for everybody in the audience we were talking about mark mentioned the importance of the opening to hook your audience just in case you haven't seen it, because there are many people who saw it online, Mark LaRoost has an amazing TED Talk. Mark, the title, if I remember well, What Nobody Tells You About Entrepreneurship or something like that? Yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah, like what I forgot what it is now, but it's like, yeah, what what no one tells you about entrepreneurship, something like that. Yeah, it's, Google a, it's, it. a, it's a great presentation. TEDx Talk, I think, has been viewed more than a million times. And... And the opening, the I love your opening, Mark, the way you grab the audience's attention. So for everybody, check it out on, on, on Google, on YouTube. Okay, right. So now what we'll do, we'll give the three finalists an opportunity to present their idea again. This time we'll give them three minutes. And then after, this is for, for the judges, after each presentation for each of the finalists, you'll have again five roughly five minutes in total maybe one minute each to offer your specific feedback on on the finalists and 
and also your vote as well, because then the winner will be selected by the four judges. So after each finalist, I'll ask you to give a vote from one to 10, and then you offer your feedback as well. Okay, so let's start again with Seb, Sebastian Bates, inspiring a generation to make a global impact. This time you've got three minutes and whenever you want, Seb. Thank you. It's a cold overcast day and I'm sitting in a wooden chair in a converted pigsty in the slums of Nairobi. There's a little boy with me called Jeremy sitting next to me. He's covered in scars, in bruises and cuts, and he's suffering from malnutrition and therefore small for his age. Jeremy's a street kid, or at least he was up until a month ago. He's now in the emergency recovery center and the team here are helping him recover from a lifetime of violence and substance abuse. He sleeps in a small room filled with bunk beds and he gets one good meal every day. The ultimate goal of the center is to bring Jeremy to full health and transition him into education, but it's not that simple. After a lifetime of abuse, to bring Jeremy to full-time education is a really tough task. And the 30 boys sitting in front of me are in the same position. The team face a huge challenge. When the children go back after six months, they often inevitably revert back to previous behavior patterns or negative peer pressure and end up back on drugs, alcohol, or homeless. They're just nine years old. And this is where our work comes in. We've worked with 25,000 children around the world, so we know how to change lives through character development. To make a permanent change and break this cycle, we need to change the way these boys think about themselves and about life. But we have a short window to make a big impact and give them the skills they need to make the decisions when they leave. So by mentoring each student through our four-step character development method, we put each child onto a new journey, a black belt journey. After a lifetime of trauma and difficult decisions, we want to give them consistency. Something magical happens when these children wear the Warrior Academy uniform for the first time. They take on a new identity. In that moment, we paint a picture of a different life, a life off the streets and out of poverty. At the beginning of 2022, we decided to work with children in developing countries, and now we sponsor and mentor over 2,000 orphaned and homeless children just like Jeremy on the same path in Kenya. We're proud to say that half our students are orphans, homeless, or live in poverty. And we aren't stopping here. In the next six months, we're opening in Nepal, India, and the Philippines. We believe that character development is the most important yet often missing aspect of a child's education, and it's got the ability to transform lives. And we exist at the Warrior Academy to inspire a generation to make a global impact. Thank you. Round of applause for Seb. Thank you so much. That was great. Also, again, uh, my only feedback here is on the timing. I leave all the rest to, to the judges. You had even 22 seconds to go. So amazing. Inspiring. C congratulations, Seb. Now I leave everything to, to the judges and let's keep it informal as we did earlier. Whoever wants to go first, either Nicole or, or Mark, Billy, Darrell, we've got roughly maximum five minutes in total to give some feedback okay. to, to Seb. I'm happy to, um, it's always good going first because then you don't get to the end and everyone said <laughs> what it is that you wanted to say. Um, Smart move. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so good, Seb, thank you. Really professional, um, very clear um, that who your target audience is, which is you. It's very strong to my heart because I've written a book called Rough Diamond and I put in um, a program at Ogilvy and Made for 15 years, which was about diversity and getting kids from, um, from the kind of kids that you're talking about uh, into uh, the, the organization. Um, you, it was full of story. You set the scene, made me listen. Your eye contact was uh, didn't waver one bit. Um, you set out the problem in the middle, and then the end was the solution about how you change lives permanently. I like the soft skills element and the mentorship and consistency and how they feel about wearing the uniform. You've got your asking and you've got your vision in about other countries. So, I, I mean quite amazing how you did all of that in three minutes so uh thank you thank even you less much. than 
even less than three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's who's next? Darrell, Billy, Mark. Yeah, I can. Uh, Sebastian is really cool. I enjoyed the storytelling. There's one thing I think. Yeah, the great opportunity is to actually see the uniform. I don't know whether you could wear it when you're doing your pitch, or at least have a headband or something like that. Um, but you definitely took me right there with the situation that the, the kids are going through. And for me, yeah, character ahead of gifting, because if you can build the character, then you'll discover what their gifting is long term. So you ticked all the boxes for me. It was a very good pitch. Um, amazing that you're looking to expand and impact more more children. But yeah, I think getting get, get the outfit, getting character, that would, that, that would really tip it over the edge. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. To, to bring the message to life even more. Yeah, that, that, that could be a great approach. Okay. Can I jump in? Yes, Mark, go ahead. All right. Um, Seb, yeah, well done. That was, that was actually really solid. Um, I've got a book coming out on, in, on storytelling and the importance of storytelling and using a personal story to land an, a message. And you did that beautifully. In fact, at the start, you know, cause I don't know if you noticed, I don't really pay attention to what you're doing visually. I kind of listen. Um, you sounded like one of those TV shows, you know, like a Bear Grylls kind of show, like I'm standing in a big sty, and there's this child, you know, it was, it was just brilliant, brilliant uh, storytelling. So I'll tell you what I think was really good. And I'll point you to a couple of things I think you could, you could do just to tighten it. And it's just, it's, we're talking polishing here, by the way. Um, but I thought you had a lot of credibility that you brought in, right? Cause what we're looking for is, is, is kind of credibility and empathy. Like, can you do what is needed? And do you understand what the problem is? And thought you did you did heaps of that. You took us in. Um, I love the idea of you know when they change, when they put this new outfit on, they transform. You know, and like we're not going to stop now. We're going to go in Nepal. There's like all these great um, projects, and I forgot how many you said, but like thousands of kids, twenty five thousand children. Um, I think did you mention black belt character? I can't remember if you mentioned it in this one, but you did in the previous. Okay, cool. Um, so just. Actually, two, well, maybe two or three specific things. One of them is at the end, again, I wasn't quite sure what your call to action was. You kind of finished and I was wanting more. I was like, what is it that you want? Because how can I help? Basically, I want to know how can I help you, right? Like, can I introduce you to people? Are you looking for funding? Are you looking for more mentors? Are you looking for schools to partner up? Like, I wasn't sure what that was. So that would be one thing I would add, like a really clear kind of specific ask. Um, you introduce character development, I forgot if you go back on your script and look at you with the first time you mentioned character development, I wrote down a bit too soon because I want you, you, you built up this case and I wasn't too sure what you meant by character development at this point. Um, that was number one, just a, just a thought. The second thing is, do you know, uh, Johan Harry? Have you heard of Johan Harry he wrote a book called lost connection um, and uh, stolen focus and uh, chasing the screen. Anyway, so watch this TED talk. It's just much easier. Um, it's called everything you thought you knew about addiction is wrong. And I think you can steal a sentence from his and even you can quote him if you want, but he says the opposite of, of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. And through our academy, that's what we provide a new sense of connection to both themselves and to others. Like you, there's something that you can play with that, with the idea that we're listening, going, oh, what these kids need is is community connection and and and, and, and kind of direction, right? Um, yeah. If I think of anything else, I'll, I'll link to you something. But those those are like specific things that I saw. Hope that's helpful. If not, just disregard it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Really helpful. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Mark, for being specific. And, and Billy, if you don't mind, I have a suggestion because, of course, we are running out of time. We are, <laughs> but what what we can do for the second finalist then I'll give you an opportunity to go first with your with your feedback. Okay, Billy? Is that, yeah, right. But before we go with the second presentation, uh, I would like um, um, uh, judges to, to vote, to, to give your vote to, for, for Sebastian from, from 1 to 10. I know you've got your, your special way of voting today, and I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And once you have it, and then, okay, we've got nine from Mark, eight. And then, is it, uh, Billy, is it nine? Nine. Yeah, and then Daryl, eight. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Nine, eight, nine, eight. Wow, well done, Seb. <laughs> okay, so let's go with 
Mehala now. Again, four words that will change the world. Shall we go, Mehala? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I have some questions for you guys. Raise your hands. Who here wants to use their business as a force for good? Who would love to open up some new avenues of patient capital? Who would love to attract and retain some top performing talent? Who would love to increase customer loyalty and win some raving fans? How about rapidly improving the performance of your operations and joining the best business club of top performers and innovative first movers around the world that really care for the world? Well, welcome to the B Corp community. It's a global movement of businesses using their business as a force for good and certified as such by a nonprofit called B Lab, who are on a mission to change the economic system from the inside. B Corp is all about progress over perfection. It's about transparency, collaboration, and continuous improvement. It's about maximizing your impact on your people, on the planet, and as well as having a healthy profit in your business. It's a movement from pure shareholder value to maximizing stakeholder value. That's all stakeholders of your business. And demonstrating that move by making board level decisions, looking at all the impacts on all of your stakeholders. If you were to start your B Corp journey, you'll start to measure and improve your impact around five really holistic pillars. As an example, the first one, not very sexy, but really important, governance. So that's evaluating your company's overall mission, your ethics and your accountability and the transparency of your company around your governance structures, your impact reporting, any stakeholder engagement. So for example, are you living that mission statement? Like for me, transforming a million lives through my business. And how do you know? Secondly, looking at your workers. So looking at the well-being of your workers, are you maximizing that well-being in terms of financial well-being, physical, professional, and social? Are you really taking care of the people in your business? Thirdly, community. This is evaluating your community impact on all the external communities around you, looking at uh, philanthropy, job creation, and supply chain. As an example, I'm an unleashed woman, as Karen uh, has described, and I take 5% of my revenue and spend it on the hunger project, which is investing in especially women's lives all around the world. Then fourth, the environment. A lot of people see sustainability as just the environment. This is just one of five pillars for B Corp. And it's assessing your company's environmental stewardship and your impact through things like managing air and climate, water and sustainability, and your company's impact on land and life. And last, but by no means least, the whole reason you're in business, your customer or your client impact. And it's looking at how are you measuring and monitoring the impact you are having on your direct customers and on the consumers of your products and services through things like customer feedback and outcome measurement? So can you see how using those five pillars to measure and improve your impact would support you? I'm so sorry, Mehala, to do that. I didn't want to do that. I, I felt very bad also because right now I'm working with a client who's giving a presentation in November on B Corp. And I'm, I'm a big fan and I didn't want to interrupt, but um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm surprised. I thought that was way under three minutes. So I apologize. No, I no, you carried away. You don't have to apologize, <laughs> but that, that's often what happens. Yeah. What, what we think is happening as presenters sometimes is not what actually happens or it's not what the audience thinks is, is happening. But, but, but that's fine. And let's, let's get started with Billy now. What, what would you like to share? Well, thank you all for presenting. And that, I think that was lovely. Your energy and the fact that you actually don't sit there stayed and you're like really getting involved is is so powerful especially like we were saying in these screened kind of places um i thought your questions at the beginning were really great again hooks hook it was almost like one hook after another and it was um inclusive because if one hook didn't connect with somebody or resonate with them there were others so one of the key things I wrote down was there was this inclusive element of how is this relevant for everybody out there not just about look at me and look at what I'm doing um, so that was the thing that was the most powerful thing for me 
Thank you, Billy. And also well done also for the other judges. Let's try to keep your, your feedback to roughly one minute. So just focus on one, one idea you really like to maybe one area for improvement. Anybody else? Daryl, Nicole? Ma yes, Nicole. Um, I, I, one key thing for me was how you got in your own actions, speaking louder than words with um, putting your, um, your weight behind Karen's project. It, it told me so much about you as a person and why I would invest in you um, as a business and, and, and your presentation. So thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Darrell, Mark? Yeah, well, um, I'm brought into B Corp because uh, one of my companies is a B Corp. So there we go. Um, the, the, the thing that I liked about it was the hooks, absolutely. The only one thing I think you could mention that might help people understand what B Corp is, is to mention, maybe use a comparison like fair trade for coffee and then use B Corp because everyone knows about the fair trade kite mark on their coffee. And this is a good way of making that analogy with business and the power of having that be at the bottom of your website or whatever. But everything else is great. I, I, you, you present really well, very strong, very engaging. Um, but yeah, that was the only thing I think you could add to it. Thank you. Yeah, analogies, comparisons, we talked about the importance of them. Yeah, amazing. Mark, anything from you? Yeah, I'll do my best to keep under 60 seconds, I promise. <laughs> um, okay, so what works really well for you, you've got a really natural, good energy, you're clearly passionate about this, you engage really well, you've got great range. So you kind of pause, you play, I think maybe when you'll look back, you'll see the reason why it was probably longer than you expected is that you did really well at playing with range and pauses, but that might be where you lost a bit of your time. Um, I really like the start when you kicked off of like, raise your hands, you know, like three questions. Um, so I'm going to give you some feedback on how I think you can Please. potentially improve it. Number one is I think you got too many questions at the start, two or three max, get into it really quickly. Cause you've asked five or six questions and I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Get into it. Start straight away. Cause you've got us hooked. And while we're still peaking, grab us. Mm -hmm. Um, my overall feedback for you is I want to hear more about what the pain point is of people trying to become B Corp and how you are the perfect solution to, to, to completely eliminate those issues. I didn't hear any of that. I know a lot about B Corp now, but I but don't know about how you work. I don't know how many clients you've worked with. I don't know what the solution is. So from a pitch perspective, that's what I would have really wanted to see because I want to work with you. I want to become a B Corp one day, right? But I don't know how. That's, that's cool. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Problem, problem and solution. Okay, perfect. Mehala, again, round of applause for Mehala. Thank you very much again. And now we've got Josh. Josh Mastromato, the importance of used furniture. In Do we vote? We've got to vote first, circular right? Economy. You're right, Mark. Thank yeah. you so much for keeping me on track. <laughs> let's vote for Mehala. So let's see the judges. So we've got Nicole, eight. And then seven, Billy, is that 7.5? Yeah, 7.5 and eight from Daryl. Okay, thank you very much. Mark, again, thank you so much. for. The... <laughs> All right, so now we have Josh. All right, can, every, can you hear me okay? Yep, I, we can. And whenever you want, you've got three minutes. All right, so imagine right now that you live in an area with low economic opportunity. You walk outside of your front door and everywhere you look, there's trash all over the street and kids, families and pets walking through that trash to get to school or the tube. Well, here in the United States, I spent a lot of time traveling to different cities, playing American football and then uh, rugby sevens. And in my travels, I noticed that in those urban environments, there was a lot of trash just dumped all over the streets. And so before the pandemic, my friends and I organized and ran local neighborhood cleanups to pick that trash up off the street. Um, but during that time, I realized that everywhere I looked in these cities, there was furniture dumped all over the place, along with clothing, electronics, and other physical goods that are typically hard to recycle. And it really bothered us because it felt like there was an easy solution. But as we dug into this further, we realized that we actually have a much bigger problem on our hands than most people were even aware of. Because in under 15 years, most of the world is going to be out of landfill space. And what gravitated us uh, toward furniture was at over 12 million tons um, annually of furniture is making up that landfill space. But even more alarming, less than 1% of all that household furniture can even get recycled. So it's never truly breaking down and needs to be diverted. 
And what most retailers are concerned with on the financial side is that almost $11 billion worth of potential resale value was being lost in secondhand furniture annually. And then what concerned us as we went around and did our customer discoveries is that most people you spoke with, it was hard for them to understand what impact they were actually having by diverting a couch away from a landfill. They couldn't really understand it. They were more concerned instead with not using plastic forts or paper plates. And so Rego Technology came in and provided people with the familiarity and ease of the Facebook group, but with the convenience of a white glove, uh, moving company or personal assistant. And then we gave people one easy to use dashboard to check their progress and then easy to understand carbon information so that they could actually see what impact they're having in real time. And what makes us unique on the startup side is that we're able to pull all this off without owning any warehouses or company vehicles, which helps us on the carbon side, but also gives us a cost and scaling advantage. And I was fortunate enough to start this with one of my best friends, who's one of the top software engineers in the Northeast uh, area of the United States. Um, and we provided logistics support for charitable organizations all throughout the country now. Um, and on top of that, we've been able to scale this impact piece of our business from Philadelphia uh, to Atlanta. So we're already active in two major cities on the East Coast. And as I mentioned previously, we've been able to divert over 70,000 pounds of furniture away from landfills in two different sustainable outlets, um, including many charitable organizations, which, in, which helps increase their revenues and uh, impact local economies. Um, so I heard the feedback from the last one. I know we're looking for uh, for call to actions here. I would love if everybody, one, could connect with me on LinkedIn at, you know, just Joshua Mastromato, um, but also we are going through a fundraising round. So we are looking to connect with sustainable impact investors as well. So thank you all for your time. Josh, four seconds. You had four seconds to go. Well done. Congratulations. And, and also, wow, if you didn't think about including a call to action and then you managed to improvise it on the spot, based on the feedback you heard earlier that was that was really good well done okay so let's hear some feedback again from our judges nicole billy mark darrell who would like to go first of course nicole i'll, call, I'll keep it short and sweet well done josh for going last because you got the feedback from the judges to be able to um eloquently uh, slot it into your pitch which was great I love that you've got your financials and the growth in, which uh, if, if there's ever an investor, I mean, they, they love to hear that first and foremost. Um, I loved how you there was a problem that you spotted and then the solution with the cleanups and how you made that into a business because you spotted that there was a problem. Um, and yeah, the call to action in the end. Oh, it was also interesting that it's a platform. Uh, I, I didn't realize that and you've added some gamification to it so that was all so interesting to to hear so thank you thank you Nicole thank you very much anybody else Billy Darrell Mark I can jump in yes I'll do I'll, I'll be this will be quick um yeah I think again Josh I think you've got a good mix of storytelling uh like a clear problem identified uh, a good solution. I think you've got good numbers, good track record. So I think all of that keep going. Um, where I would point you to are three things. One is go back through the recording and count the number of uhs and ums that you have. Yeah, that'll be the first thing because the more you pitch, the less I want to see what those kind of in-between segues. That's number one. Number two, uh, I want to see a vision. What, 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 where are you taking us as an audience? Like we want to live in a world where not a single couch spends more than 10 minutes outside on the, on the curb, you know, something like that, that I can go, Oh, that I want to be part of that world. And, uh, there was a third one. I just completely forgot it, but it's, uh, it's fine. You, <laughs> that's my, th Oh yeah, that was it. Be careful not to put too much stats at the loss of the interest. Like the real, the real tricky for you is going to be how much is, is just enough, but not too much. Good luck. Yeah. And on the mark verbal fillers, I also see Nicole's comments. Now, the the problem, if you want, with verbal fillers is that these are called unwords, and they make you look uncertain. So you don't want to appear uncertain. There is a there is a real reason why we use verbal fillers. They come from conversations. In a conversation, Josh, if I have a child with you and I use um, I'm telling you, wait, don't interrupt. 
it's still my turn to speak. So it, they, it makes sense in a conversation, but Mark is right. Here, the dynamic is different. Remember, these are yeah. unwords. They make you look uncertain. And the feedback he gave you, watch the recording. No, the only solution for verbal fiddlers is two things. One, awareness, and you can become aware of whether or not you use verbal fiddlers by watching yourself. And the second one is practice, practice, practice. But you need to practice by being aware of whether or not you use filler words and which ones. Thank you very much, Mark. Darrell, anything from you? Yeah, I really enjoyed the, the the actual journey that you told and the story. So talking about the uh, people walking behind you, it'd be interesting if they were walking out with chairs or furniture. <laughs> Just a bit of interaction there when you were set. Um, but generally speaking, I thought it was uh, yeah, it was really strong. It was it was strong in the fact that you were telling the story, and there was a way. I like the thing you mentioned in Facebook group as well, and that maybe could have been your ask as well. Get people to join the community and and major movement. I mean, that would be my key thing. As a bit of criticism, there is to say, talk about it being a movement. You can join us on the app. You can join us in Facebook. Um, that will get it across. I think apart from that, I think you've got all the elements there. I just think there needs to be a little bit of refinement in terms of practice. I think that's it. And Daryl, going back to your first point, you are a fan, it looks like you are a fan of props and, and doing something physical in <laughs> presentations. At, at Ideas on Stage, we when we work with a client, we, depending on the context, but we often try to include what we call a magic moment, but magic with a Q at the end, not with a C. And magic stands for something that makes a great impression quickly. Yeah. So the question is, what can you say? What can you show? As you said, Dar, what can you do that will make your message unforgettable? Yeah. That can be very powerful. Okay, so now I haven't forgotten. Let's do the vote. So let me make sure that I can see everybody. So I've got nine here from Nicole and then eight, nine and Mark. I can't see Mark on screen. Can you? Can you shout it, Mark, by any chance? Or let me see. Mark, I now can see you. Now I can see you. Yeah. 8.5. 8.5. I like your precision, Mark. Yeah, 7.5, 8.5. And so, wow, that 0.5, Mark, I think made a difference. That 0.5 made a difference because we've got Mehala, 30.5, Seb, 34 and Josh, 34.5. So Josh, congratulations with that 0.5. You are the winner. Congratulations again. And as Mark said at the very beginning, congratulations, of course, to you, Josh, but to everybody, to the three finalists and to all the other speakers as well. Now, what we'll do is this. We just have a few minutes and then we'll, we'll close. Let me mention what the prices are. We've got, of course, something for you, Josh, but not just for you. So I'll get to you, Josh, in a minute. For everybody, what we have is, and, and Alice, if you don't mind, if you can include the links in the chat, we have the, a virtual goodie bag, which is a collection of either free resources or bonuses, discounts, that from, by the way, from our speakers, our judges, our partners. So everybody has been very kind to create something spe special for you. It's the first link you'll see here from, from LS at like Team Ideas on Stage, the first link, virtual goodie bag. This is for everybody. And for all the speakers and all the judges, I'll send you an actual copy, a physical copy of a book by Phil Wakenell who is with us today, Business Presentation Revolution. Now, of course, I'm biased, but I do think that it's a fantastic book on all things pitching, presenting, and public speaking. So I'll send it to you. And for the three finalists, in addition to the book, I'll also give you free access to my own online course, which has 26 video lessons for more than two hours of content, plus lots of exercises, tools, and templates that you can use to apply what you learn in your very next presentations. And then for you, Josh, 
the book, the online course, and I'm also very happy to offer free coaching, a one, one session, coaching session. We can take you offline. We can use the session for whatever you want, as long as, depending on your needs, as long as we can talk about public speaking, presenting, pitching, then, then we can help. So that's your, that's your prize. I hope it helps. And also for everybody, and you'll see it at the very end of the links that Helles has posted, you've got the scorecard and the web class. So two free resources for everybody in case you are interested. One is on the left, the Confident Presenter Scorecard. Also feel free to take a screenshot or again, see the links in the chat. This is an online tool that you can take to very quickly assess your presentation skills. It takes less than three minutes, it's free. You just need to answer a few questions and then you'll get a score, what that score means for you. And it also identifies opportunities for improvement. So check it out. And the other thing on the right-hand side of the screen is we have an upcoming web class. Again, it's a free session, less than an hour, how to avoid confusing your audience, even if you are not a natural presenter. It's on the 25th of October at 2 p.m. UK time. There is a recording if your time zone is different. So again, feel free to register, it's free. And I'll, I hope to see you there. And then finally, if you are really interested in, in these things, pitching, presenting, public speaking, then I'm very happy to offer a complimentary free consultation. I can do that. I've got three available spots at the moment. And this consultation is an opportunity for you to, to see, for both of us, to see if there is a fit between what you may be looking for from a presentation skills perspective and what we have to offer. And regardless of whether or not there's a good fit, I can promise you that if you attend the consultation, you'll walk away with much greater clarity on how you and, and all your teams can become more confident presenters. And you'll also walk away with a free copy, not PDF, the actual copy of Phil's book, Business Presentation Revolution. If you're interested, just type yes in the chat. Now, I see some yeses already also in the private chat to me. Up to you. You can express your interest by typing yes privately to me, as many people are doing, that's fine. You can express your interest in the public chat. Just to clarify though, if you type yes, first of all, you are not committing to anything. You're just telling me that you'd like to learn a little bit more about this. And then what I'll do, I'll get in touch. I'll give you more information. I want to check if you qualify. And then if that's the case, we'll go ahead and arrange a time. And again, I want to thank everybody, the speakers, the judges, uh, the audience, our partners, Impact Hub, King's Cross, Social Enterprise, Mark CIC, Alia, Goodwill Studios, Hatch Enterprise, and the new PL Brand Purpose Institute. And from my side, if there's one thing I would really like you to take away from this session is, and by the way, this is the main reason why we do what we do at Ideas on Stage. I get really frustrated when I see great ideas. And by the way, I'm not talking about, I'm not saying that this is what happened today, but in general, I get really frustrated when I see great ideas failing, getting lost, being forgotten, not being accepted, not because of the ideas themselves. Often the ideas are great. It's just because of the way they are presented and it shouldn't be like that. And I get even more frustrated when we are talking, like today, when we're talking about ideas that have the power to change the world. Again, I'm not saying that this happened today, but that's what I don't like to see. So if we go back to the very first thing we, we mentioned at the very beginning, Remember, we've got two key beliefs and, that, and there's a very powerful intersection between the idea of using business as a way to make the world a better place. But on top of that, unfortunately, that's not enough. If you do have an idea, like our speakers today, but also in the audience, I'm sure that many of you or some of you have ideas, businesses, products, services that have the power to make the world a better place. If you've got the idea, it's your responsibility to make sure that you know how to pitch it, present it, and communicate it effectively. Remember, you can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you can't communicate it, it doesn't matter. That's my key message. I hope you found it useful today. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And I hope to see you next year for the fourth edition of the Good Pitch Summit. And for now, thank you very much. All the very best. Let's keep in touch. Ciao. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, guys.